will I stop as we pray together Heavenly Father we bless your name for this retreat we thank you for your purpose in gathering us together we're asking Lord that your purpose will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus name we pray Lord as we come to this session of Bible teaching that your spirit will take the word and teach every one of us in Jesus name lead us to the truth practical truth pungent truth powerful truth that will turn every life around in Jesus name and we pray Lord will be more useful to you in the kingdom as you teach us your word and the word transforms our lives be glorified in every life Lord and be glorified in your church in Jesus name we pray we come to a session of Bible teaching and even though many of us who are old timers old members of the church we know the importance of Bible teaching but for the benefit of those who are new I need to tell you that Bible teaching was a very central point and central ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ and he passed that on to his disciples that what he did we who are following him should do and as the church is planted as the church is established as the church has been prepared for the coming of the Lord this area of ministry is central special important indispensable a non-negotiable in the ministry of the church we're looking at the teaching of the word of God this time consecration before conquest consecration before conquest immediately we are born again Christ enters into the believer and he wants the believer to understand that the moment you are born again you are not what you used to be somebody the risen Christ the mighty Christ and the all-inclusive Christ with all his blessings he has entered into you he says behold I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will come in to him and the Christ to come seen is not the weak anemic Christ is the mighty Christ is the risen Christ he lives on the inside of us and because the conquering Christ lives on the inside of us he wants to lead us to victory and that's the reason why we're talking about the conquest the victory the triumph of the child of God understand that if you have Christ in you and you really knew the value the walls the might the strength the power of the one that lives in you you will not be so weak as to be defeated in the battles of life in first John chapter 4 verse 4 first John chapter 4 verse 4 ye of God little children even from the point you are born again ye of God little children every saved soul is of God every baby in Christ is of God and every young man every young woman in Christ every father every mother in Christ everyone that has known the Lord and is still abiding in the Lord ye of God little children and have overcome them it gives us the victory it makes us to conquer if we abide in him ye have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world he wants us to know that 
the enemies in the world are weaker than we are the enemies in the spirit world are weaker than we are why because greater is he that is in you than he satan than he evil spirit than he the tempter than he the temptress than he the slanderer than he the adversary that is in the world with that knowledge he tells us we are then overcomers that's why he says in Romans chapter 8 Romans chapter 8 and in verse 37 he tells us who we are and he tells us what victory we have the life of the Christian is not a defeated life it's not a life that is falling and rising it's not a life that is at the mercy of every tempter at the mercy of every temptress it's not a life that's at the mercy of every wicked man every wicked woman in the world it is a life that conquers a life that is victorious a life that shows that we have the mighty conquering one in us that's why it says in Romans chapter 8 verse 37 nay in all these things in the midst of those things in the midst of those temptations in the midst of those trials in the midst of those challenges in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us you will conquer in first corinthians chapter 15 verse 57 first corinthians chapter 15 verse 57 but thanks be to god which giveth us notice the language there he giveth us not that he gave in the past yes he did but today he still gives every moment of challenge in your life he gives the power every time you're at a crossroad he gives the power every time the enemy comes like a mighty flood wanting to overwhelm you swallow you up he gives the victory thanks be unto god which gives us the victory through our lord jesus christ it will give you the victory as we think about and talk about and teach about the conquest what leads to that you must want to conquer before you can conquer and you must present yourself before the lord fully wholeheartedly saying that you want to bear the mark and the banner of jesus christ the conquering one you want to stand for him you want to represent him you want to commit yourself as one of the soldiers in the army of the lord that's what brings consecration before that conquest there are three things we're going to look at number one the savior's consecration as our substitute as you consider your own personal commitment personal consecration you want to first of all think about the savior's consecration what he did for you what he underwent for you what he submitted to on your behalf what he gave himself to the consecration the surrender the submission that christ himself went through because of you as a result of that you want to say if he did that for me if he suffered so much for me what is it i cannot do for him or bear for him if he bore the cross for me will i not bear my cross for him number one the savior's consecration as our substitute number two our similar 
consecration to the Savior because that's what he has done because that's what he laid down it's for that reason where saying thank you Jesus was saying we're grateful was saying as a mark of our gratitude unto you here is our life we lay down that life for you our similar consecration to the savior number three our spiritual conquest it is service you don't have conquest except you voluntarily move into the battlefield if you are afraid of the battlefield you always see your city room always on your bed and you're shielding yourself from difficulty from danger from conflict from battle from engaging the enemy there'll be no victory because there was no battle but it is as you move into the service of the lord you'll face challenges you'll face contradictions of men you'll face trial but you know you are going not to find out whether you are going to overcome or not you're going with the knowledge that christ has conquered he has overcome and you are going to overcome and then you move there to render service to the lord and you have spiritual conquest in his service number one our savior's consecration as our substitute in john chapter 10 verses 17 and 18 john chapter 10 reading from verse 17 and verse 18 therefore does my father love me because i lay down my life that i might take it again i lay down my life this is voluntary this is personal this is what he himself did he did that because he loves you so much and he wanted you saved and he knew the only way for you to be saved is to come and bear your penalty your punishment your judgment he said in verse 18 no man taketh my life from me but i lay down of myself i have power to lay it down and i have power to take it again this commandment have i received of my father you think of the pure life the sinless life the holy life the spotless life the heavenly life of jesus christ the precious life of jesus christ he didn't count it so sacred and so precious that he felt that he would feel this is too good to lay down for that dirty sinner this is too precious to lay down for that worthless sinner no he counted you worthy and counted you significant enough to lay his pure perfect spotless sinless eternal life to lay everything down and that's why you're asking yourself if he did that for me what am i willing to lay down also for him john chapter 17 verse 19 and for their sakes i sanctify myself i set myself apart not to be a king now but to be a sacrifice for their sakes i set myself apart unto death i didn't count life so important that i will hold on to life dear life because everybody does that but he said i do not do what everybody does i set apart myself as a sacrifice unto death then he says in that verse 19 that they also might be sanctified through the truth i show them the example i lay down my life 
I set myself apart not for enjoyment, not for ease, not for pleasure. I set myself apart unto this in Psalm 40, verses 7 and 8. Again, the life of Christ in prophetic language is revealed unto us. It says in Psalm 40, verse 7, Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. You know, the supreme will of the Father is that he will drink the bitter cup for you. The supreme will of the Father is that he will drink the cup of judgment for you. That's why he prayed in Gethsemane, Father, if this cup containing the judgment, containing the perdition, containing the punishment, containing the penalty of your sin, he said, if this cup will not pass by me except I drink it to the last drop of the dregs inside, thy will be done. I delight to do thy will. Oh my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. See the application in Hebrews chapter 10. What we have just read now in Psalm 40, verses 7 and 8. And see that this is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. The price he paid for your salvation. The commitment he made for your salvation. The absolute surrender. The complete yieldedness. The total consecration he made for your salvation. And he's then calling on you. See what I've done for you. And I've left you in the world that you will taste a bit of that consecration. So you can be also for the salvation of the multitudes of people I died for. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world referring to Christ, he said, Sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not. That is all the sacrifice of the Old Testament, Old Covenant. They didn't perfect the people, purge the people, purify the people. Because of that, God had no pleasure in them. But a body has not prepared me in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure then said i lo i come in the volume of the book it's written of me to do thy will O god then he tells us in verse 8 above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin Thou wouldest not, neither art thou pleasure therein, which are ordered, which are offered by law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that she may establish the second by the which will. I come to do your will. I come to sacrifice. I come to lay my life down. I come to consecrate, commit my life completely, wholeheartedly unto you. By that will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. He did it once and he did it for all. He did it for all nations. He did it for all people. He did it for all generations. He did it for all the people that will live. From that time until he comes again, he's made that sacrifice for you. In fact, Hebrews chapter 2 tells us that he tasted death. He went through death. He submitted unto death. He gave himself voluntarily unto death for your sake so that 
you wouldn't have to die anymore that's the savior's consecration as your substitute and it's now calling you that you will also offer unto him in gratitude to him you will offer yourself unto him as well the one who is asking you to make a commitment a consecration is not somebody who has not done anything for you it's not somebody who just want to take advantage of you he has first of all allowed you to take advantage of him he has laid his life down and as a result of laying his life down and now you are saved it says see what i did for you see what i went through for you see what i suffered for you would you give me your life and consecrate commit your life completely unto me hebrews chapter 2 reading there from verse 9 hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 but we see jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death for the suffering of death his own consecration led him to calvary his own consecration allowed him to be nailed to the cross his own consecration did not stop until he died for you but we'll see him now after suffering the penalty of death for you crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of god should taste death for every man should taste death for every man should taste death for every man because he died for you that's why you now have eternal life isaiah chapter 53 i say i was looking forward to this the sacrifice of christ the consecration of christ the commitment of christ the death of christ for you for me for everyone it's on the basis of this that he now says i bore your punishment i took your sins away i took your condemnation at a great price and i paid the whole price would you now show your gratitude will you now give yourself to me completely without reservation isaiah chapter 53 reading from verse 4 isaiah 53 verse 4 surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted the lord should have smitten you condemned you sent you to hell fire forever but the lord jesus said i consecrate my life everything i am on his behalf on our behalf smite me instead of smiting him he was wounded for transgressions he was bruised for iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes were healed all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all he knew how bitter the punishment of iniquity would be he did not dodge it he did not try to escape it voluntarily he laid down his life so that it will be the lamb that taketh away the sin of the world he was oppressed verse 7 and he was afflicted that's verse 7 yet he opened not his mouth he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb so he opened openness not his mouth i told him philippians chapter 2 philippians chapter 2 verse 5 says 
will that just be an isolate, isolated suffering of Christ or is there something you and I are to learn or take from that from the consecration of Christ Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 let this mind be you which was also in Christ Jesus the mind to lay everything down it was in Christ let it be in you the mind to consecrate to the whole will entire will of the father on your behalf it says have that mind as well the mind of Christ that he did not count the price too high too great he paid the whole price for your salvation he says there are sinners that will never know about salvation except they know through you declaring that message he says let the mind of Christ be you in verse 6 who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but he made himself of no of no reputation he made himself of no reputation he wasn't seeking the praise of men the applause of men the promotion by men or the appreciation of men it says have the same attitude they praise you or blame you they oppress you or they release you they persecute you or they help you it says don't worry about that see what christ has done that even though he was in the form of god yet he made of himself no reputation he took upon him the form of a servant and he was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even unto the death of the cross the death on the cross well that's what christ has done for you for me for all believers and this is what he expects of you that you in a similar fashion you will consecrate yourself unto him that whatever he wills whatever he desires whatever he appoints whatever he assigns you're willing to do that in gratitude to him as a result for what he has done point number two now is our similar consecration to the savior our consecration is not really to the church our consecration is not to a man our consecration is not to the sinners we are ministering to uh, even though we are ministering to the sinners even though we are ministering to the church even though we are helping a man or a woman to know the Lord more we are doing that not just for him not just for her we are doing it for the Lord we are doing it on behalf of the Lord and so if you understand that that this is a similar consecration what the Lord has done for you you are not doing for him and he's sending as much as, as he have done it to the least of these my brethren you have done it for me and unto me our similar consecration to the savior second corinthians chapter 5 verse 14 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 14 for the love of christ constraineth us the love of christ compels us the love of christ influences us drives us because with us judge because with us reason because with us make our conclusion that if one died for all then we're all dead because he died for us we are now to be dead dead to the feelings of men and women 
what do you say you're too bright and too intelligent to consecrate yourself to the lord he was so great and so good so precious to heaven and to the father and yet he consecrated everything for you they say you're too beautiful to be a christian and to commit yourself unto the lord so wholeheartedly and then he reminds you he was the beauty and the glory of heaven and yet he consecrated everything for you if he died for all then we're all dead they say you are too progressive they say you are too pros too much prosperous for you to commit yourself unto the lord but we know that he was rich and for your sakes he became poor that you might become rich what he's saying is because he did not count any expense any price so high that he could not pay he did not count any quality so great he could not give up that's why he's also now saying if one died for all they were all dead and that in verse 15 and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves what's consecration consecration is that you stop living for yourself stop doing what you like to do going where you like to go it says for my sake abandon your own desires abandon your own goals abandon your own feelings what you like to be what you like to do so that henceforth you are not living to yourself but unto him which died for them and rose again you live for him you live like him you live through his power you live for his purpose alone what will he want you to do where will he want you to be it's difficult yes that's what he wants that's what he demands it's sometimes tiresome tiring but that's what he wants it's demanding that's what he wants you're not living now for your ease you're living for his glory first john chapter 3 verse 16 in first john chapter 3 verse 16 by perceive we the love of god because he laid down his life for us god loves us for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life he gave up his only begotten son only begotten son that's who god gave up for you for your salvation so you will not perish hereby perceive we the love of god because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren when it says we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren what has your life acquired on earth you came to this world as a baby you went to school you got certificate you got job you got property you got in you've got some wisdom you've got some knowledge you've got some some things and now he says all those things that your life has acquired amassed there should be a willingness that if the salvation of the sinners around you demand that you should be willing to lay that down the knowledge to lay it down for them the wisdom to lay it down for them the ability and the skill to lay it down for the sake of other people as christ has laid down himself for you everything you have got by this life the precious things the good things the valuable things the worthy things that you are willing to lay down for the salvation of other people and 
for the preservation of other people too in verse 17 but who so has this was good and seeth his brother in need have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from them how dwelleth the love of god in him who so has this was good don't limit that to money if you have money other people are in abject poverty other people are naked other people are hungry other people are in need be willing to lay the money down for their benefit if you have knowledge the knowledge of the scriptures is something good to know the lord to know the word of the lord other people are in ignorance they're living in darkness they do not know the way of salvation be willing to lay that down for them any skill you have any ability you have any spiritual quality you have got through this life your spiritual life be willing to lead it lead them for them my little children let us not love in words neither in tongue but in deed and in truth we're coming back to philippians chapter 2 and we're looking at what the lord is telling us in philippians chapter 2 verse 3 let nothing be done through strife of in glory is reminding us that whatever we're doing for the sake for the sake of the benefits of others you're not really doing it for them you're doing it for the lord and if you're doing it for the lord whether they appreciate you or not they praise you or not you say this is my similar consecration to the savior the savior has done this for me i'm doing this for him am i witnessing to a sinner i'm doing this for christ am i praying for a sick person i'm doing it for christ am i clothing the naked i'm doing it for christ am i offering my service in the assembly of the saints of god i'm doing it for christ and it says if you're doing it for christ nothing will be done through strife of vain glory there'll be no competition there'll be no self-promotion there'll be no place seeking there'll be no pride it says but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves as you consecrate your all to the lord other people also ought to consecrate their all unto the lord you're not saying i'm there already what are you doing there I'm serving there already. Why are you serving there? I've given myself to the Lord. And they say, Ria, I want to win them to the Lord. What are you doing there? He too has consecrated himself to the Lord. No strife. No fighting. No vainglory. No pride. Look not every man on his own things. But every man also on the things of others. The advantage of others let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus every day you have to arm yourself close yourself with the mind of christ and this is how you are to live who being in the form of god thought it not robbery to be equal with god you're not thinking of who you are every time if it were not for church this is where i would be this is what i'll be doing if it were not for church you'll not be sitting by my side if it were not for church we will not be sitting in the same place are you talking to me like that if it were not for church you will not even have any chance to see my face i'm up up high there he's saying you cannot talk like that that's why he's telling us reminding us that we are all important in the sight of the lord and we shall all humble ourselves we shall have the mind of christ in us but he made himself of no reputation you're not seeking for the praise of men you're not seeking for appreciation he took upon him the form of his servant voluntarily i have come to serve voluntarily what can i do there the least of duties the meanest of duties you're willing to do 
and whatever is available you want to do that and carry that out for the sake of the lord that's the consecration the lord is talking about he took he took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in the fashion as a man he humbled himself he humbled himself that's the consecration you cannot just say i lay that down and then you're full of pride and then you put your hands in the pocket and say see my consecration see what i've done see see the lengths i've gone it's saying that the consecrations become valuable when you are closed with humility we're looking at john chapter 12. john chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 24. john chapter 12 verse 24. it tells us in verse 24 verily verily i say unto you except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die it abides alone it's saying that you're not consecrated until you allow that corn of which to fall into the ground and die die to self-consciousness die to thinking all the time this is who i am this is how great i am in the world that is my company this is my colleague have you heard do you see this picture of this person high up there that the whole nation is uh, looking at and talking about that was my colleague and i need to have the same respect as i come to the church no not if you are consecrated let that corn of wheat fall into the ground and die die to self-consciousness the psychology of the day exalts what he calls self-esteem promote yourself build up yourself blow your own trumpet talk about how great you are feel great act great behave great talk big let everybody know you you are if you don't blow your trumpet the trumpet will rust nobody will blow it for you blow your trumpet that's the world they would not die to themselves they are not born again can you blame them but for those who are following christ it says no self-esteem buried self-consciousness bury that always thinking about yourself and wanting to be the center of gravity anywhere you are respect me give me some honor honor me exalt me promote me show me that i'm valuable let me feel that i have self-esteem it says bury that look at the words of jesus very very late I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. You bury that corn of wheat. You don't even take notice of it anymore. And it's not screaming for recognition. It's not screaming for appreciation. It's falling to the ground and then it dies. Except that happens, it abides alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit he that loveth his life shall lose it you love your life protecting that life protecting the self-esteem protecting self-consciousness wanting to be appreciated honored exalted wanting to be in the high tower and high platform it says he that loveth his life shall lose it but he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal when you throw your life in the hands of christ when you throw your life down for the service of god people think you've lost that life you hate your life and you don't know how much money you could be making if you didn't give yourself so completely so wholeheartedly to what they call religion 
that's what they say they say you could be worth this or this or that in the advertising industry but they're saying i care none i care for none of those things in second timothy chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 reading from verse 10 it tells us therefore i endure all things for the elect's sake that's consecration says a lot of things come my way the slander the persecution the jesting jeering the insults the oppression the hatred persecution in various forms but he says i endure all those things for the less sake that they may also obtain salvation because of those sinners who are not saved he says i will endure anything and everything and remember that's the essence of the consecration that the consecration of the lord jesus christ has given us salvation our consecration will make that salvation available to those who have not been saved therefore in verse 10 i endure all things for the less sake that they may also obtain sal the salvation which is in christ jesus with eternal glory luke chapter 9 verse 23 luke chapter 9 verse 23 the consecration the lord expects from you from me from everyone that appreciates what sacrifice christ has given on their behalf in luke chapter 9 verse 23 and he said unto them to them all if any man will come after me let him deny himself you will not lack opportunities that demand you deny yourself it comes up every day when you like to speak a particular word you say that will not be to the encouragement of the person I'm speaking to i deny myself i don't speak that there's some words uh, you know sometimes uh, it, it happened to us when we were at, in the school you've just learned a particular vocabulary and this particular vocabulary is you know a kind of a, it's a cruel word it's a dirty word it's a stinking word it's a stinking word but uh, all those uh, students that were not they didn't know anything about salvation about righteousness they just are uh, eager to use that vocabulary on somebody and it doesn't it doesn't matter how those people feel it doesn't matter whether that word will cut their fellow students down it doesn't matter whether that thing will crush the person you are talking to well those are unbelievers the believers that's a word that comes to you that's an idea that comes to you and yourself that is your your personality you want to speak that word you want to show that i know this word but it will crush the person you want to talk to it will kill the spirit of the person you are talking to it will belittle the person you are talking to it will not help him to grow in the salvation of the lord in the service of the lord you swallow that word you deny yourself you deny yourself of the pleasure of saying that word that will hurt your fellow brother that's what jesus is saying if any man will come after me let him deny himself opportunities will come every day when the tendency will be to do this or do this or do that to please yourself let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever will lose his life for my sake the same shall save it for what man what's a man advantage if he if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away 
He wants to preserve your life unto life eternal. Look at verse 57 as an illustration of what Jesus said. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow after him. Lay everything at the feet of Jesus Christ. Our consecration to the Savior because of what he has done for us. In Luke chapter 9, verse 57, and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, birds of the air, birds of the air have their nests, but the Son of Man has not where to lay his head. You'll not find comfort if you follow. You'll not find convenience if you follow. You'll not find the ease of life if you follow. You're not going to find the pleasures of life if you follow. We can't see the man anymore. He was not willing to deny himself of temporary pleasure. Temporal ease. So as to gain life eternal. Verse 59, and he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus saith unto him, Let the dead bury that they are dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. That's laying everything down. Preaching the kingdom of God might not allow you to do some things, regular things that other people do in the family circle, extended family. And they'll make jest of you, they'll make fun of you. He always is taking religion as his own life. Religion is his father, religion is his mother, religion is his uh, relative, religion is his family, religion is everything to him. He doesn't know that, you know, uh, we need to be social, we need to do this, we need to do that. Uh, they, they will say all manner of things against you. And some Christians who do not know the, you know, what commitment is all about, what consecration is all about, they also say the same things about you. But it says, let the dead bury their dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, I will, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid farewell to them at home that at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back his feet for the kingdom of god it challenges us and he tells us we must lay everything down is that too much for the man for the one who has laid everything down for us no it's just a similar consecration he's done it for our sakes we'll not do it for his sake that leads us to the service of the Lord because he says, Go preach the kingdom of God, our spiritual conquest in his service. Our spiritual conquest in his service. For us to have the spiritual conquest, there must be something we push aside. What the world is running after, they don't have another world to think of. They don't have another kingdom to think of. All they have is a life that now is. We cannot be like them. First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. The people of the world don't have contentment. They have this certificate. They must get the next one. They built this house. Immediately they finished building the first house. They're already planning to lay the foundation of the next one. They're on this job. And they're earning quite well. They're already seeking for and looking at all the advertisements for a greater job a better job they have this they want to have that they have this they want to have that they're always looking forward and they are trying running after the mirage of life they never catch and they never get to the place they're pursuing but it says for the christian whose life has not been totally yielded to the lord and he wants his life to count for the kingdom. 
it says godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out and having food and raiment let us be there with content but they that will be rich they fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith did you see that which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith the things of the world we seek when we abandon the work of god abandon the service of the lord abandon our commitment and consecration it says it makes us to err from the faith we go astray and pierce themselves through with many sorrows but thou o man of god but thou o child of god flee these things and follow after righteousness godliness faith love patience meekness fight the good fight of faith that's the calling that's the service fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses when it says fight the good fight of faith it reminds you of Jude verse 3 fight the good fight of faith the any time we shall fight the good fight of faith is at this time when false prophets are so many innumerable when false religion is capturing the hearts and the minds of many people for you to fight the battles of the lord and rescue those perishing souls and bring them to the lord beloved verse 3 of jude when i gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contain for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints that's going to take some consecration you lose uh, respect in some circles when you earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints but losing their respect and losing their honor losing their appreciation appreciation that's all right that's what we lay down we're not uh, you know we're not so thirsty and so hungry for the praise of man that we will not do what the lord has called us to do in the midst of those who approve of false doctrine who do not know the difference between false doctrine and sound doctrine when you stand for sound doctrine they call you all sorts of names even those who profess to be christians and those who profess to even believe what they think what they think you believe they might you know say why don't you mellow down a little bit why don't you just allow them to preach their false doctrine allow them to even come to congregation and uh, peddle their false doctrine show some understanding everybody doesn't know what you know and whatever they know let them you know give them liberty if you say no we're honestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints they are wondering what kind of queer man queer woman you are but that's the calling of the lord you want to consecrate to the lord and conquer false doctrine you will not submit or yield to false doctrine in jesus name i thought i'll hear amen from that corner there in john chapter 4 verse 34 consecration john chapter 4 verse 34 jesus said unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work that, that was the commitment of christ and that's the commitment is calling you to if you are going to have a similar consecration like that of jesus christ you'll say my meat the sin that really satisfies me 
the thing that gives me fulfillment in life is that i will do the will of him that sent me you know that you are not just there by chance you're not just there to fill up space you are sent specifically to do something you want to do it until you finish that's the commitment you want to give yourself to chapter 9 of john john chapter 9 verse 4 i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man can walk he said i must walk the works of him that sent me that's the kind of work the pharisees would have loved jesus to do they gave him chance he appeared in the synagogue and they gave him the book of isaiah to read all they wanted to to for him to do was that he will approve of them he will grant them authority he will say yes to every tradition they had that's the work the pharisees would have given him to do consecration does not mean that we dance to every tune of every religious person consecration does not mean that we bend and bow to the desires of every backslider every traditionalist consecration means that we find out what is the work the lord has committed into, into your hand to do why are you here why are you on earth why did he leave you here why has he saved you why has he put you in the place he has put you find out the reason why and fit into that that's all consecration means i must work the works of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man can walk and when you are in the middle of that service and you do what the lord has called you to do there might be some persecution pain pressure whatever you don't mind all those things what you, what you really center your mind on is what work the father has committed to your hand to do acts chapter 20 in verse 22 and now behold i go bound in the spirit unto jerusalem what does that mean paul the apostle said with all the news i'm hearing with the look on the faces of the people around and with what i know is waiting for me in jerusalem i feel the discomfort inside i feel the binding on the inside behold i go bound in the spirit unto jerusalem not knowing the things that shall befall me there he said i know trouble is waiting for me there persecution waiting for me there i've seen a lot already i know i'm going to see a lot more when i get to jerusalem save that the holy ghost witnesses in every city saying that bonds and afflictions abide me bonds and afflictions abide me but if that the place the lord has said something must be done by me that there is an assignment to carry out a duty to do a responsibility to fulfill and there is a work that you must do that's why he now says this consecration verse 24 but none of those things of these things move me neither count i my life dear unto myself so that i might finish my course with joy i pray you'll finish i said i pray you'll finish if you don't mind the noise on the street if you don't mind the news that the people are peddling all around if you don't mind all that the people are saying if you don't mind caution 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 care 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 watch out watch out we hear a lot this this and that the people who are always watching the wind where the wind is blowing you will not do what the lord has called you to do but none of these things move me neither count i my life dear unto myself 
so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I pray you'll do the work of God. In the service of the Lord, you recommit yourself, reconsecrate yourself so that when it's convenient, when it's not convenient, when it's easy, when it's tough, you'll do what the Lord has created you and commissioned you to do in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee, therefore, therefore, because of what Christ has done for you, I charge thee, therefore, because he has put so much faith in you and he has given you a work to do that no other person can do i charge thee therefore because many sinners are waiting and the lord is expecting you'll put you'll bring everything you've got lay it on the altar for the salvation of the souls all around i charge thee therefore before god and the lord jesus christ who shall judge the quick the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word if you say you are consecrated but you're not preaching the word there's no consecration if you say you are consecrated and you're not reaching out to sinners to be saved there's no consecration if you say you are consecrated and you're not reaching out to believers to disciple them strengthen them that's no consecration if you say you are consecrated and you're not working for the kingdom that's no consecration if you are consecrated preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine reprove rebuke that's not uh, the in theme. That's not congregation friendly in the world in which we live. No rebuke, no correction. Allow sinners to sin. Allow backsliders to misbehave. Allow everybody, allow self to manifest itself without any check, without any control. That's what the world is saying. That's what the religious world is saying. It takes consecration to reprove a sinner when you know that sinner is going to hate you. But to reprove him, hoping he will wake up and repent, that takes consecration. It takes consecration for you to approach a backslider and say, my friend, you're not a brother anymore. You're not a sister anymore. Your life shows you're going the negative direction if you continue like this or perish that takes some iron backbone it takes some consecration it takes some temerity it takes some real strength of character but that's what you need to reprove and to rebuke and to exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure some doctrine but after their own lusts shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables but watch thou in all things watch consecrate give yourself to the lord surrender submit yourself to the lord and come back once again and lay everything you've got on the altar of sacrifice for the service of the Lord. Watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. Christ has done it. You will do it. Christ overcame. You will overcome. See how many years you have become a Christian. And see the few years remaining. I pray that the same grace that God has given you all these years, all the grace that you could have given you if you had waited on him. I pray that that grace will multiply in your life in Jesus' name. And I pray that you'll be faithful to the very end in Jesus' name. 
now it's going to take you now seeking the help of the lord that's why it says in isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 as i not known as i not heard that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding he giveth power to the faint he'll give you power and to them that have no strength he increases strength it will increase your strength today even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that do what they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength you want to renew your strength you want to renew your mind you want to renew your commitment you want your eyes to become brighter and the dimness of the vision that is coming on you as if you cannot see clearly anymore the calling of god upon your life you want all the dimness to come away to get away they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they renew their power they renew their might they will renew their vision they renew their consecration they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run you will not be weary they shall walk and you will not fade the lord is calling you now to come back to the cross come back to calvary look again at what christ has done and say lord if you did that for me i will do anything everything all for thee let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer and tell the lord you've done so much for me lord i will do all i can all i'm assigned to do all you assign me to do i will do it for you i'll do it for your sakes i want uh, the camp commandants the camp commandants in all the various uh, retreat locations or the state overseer region overseer or the leaders appointed there to take over now and lead us in prayer lead us in prayer that we commit ourselves unto the lord that we consecrate we give ourselves all we have we give unto the lord and as we pray over here to you you tell the lord oh lord here am i i give everything i surrender once again because of what jesus has done for me i want to do all i can do i want to do for the lord without any reservation without pulling back i give myself fully completely unto the lord I call on our own camp commandant, camp commandant here to come and lead us in prayer.